Hope everybody had a good week last week. Glad to be back with another live stream. Thanks for joining in. I see uh, some people have uh, signed on already. Thanks for coming in. Uh, as always, I am using an iPad, so I can't see your names until you uh, put messages up. So feel free to put messages up. Uh, if you are not a returning person or um, to our live streams, if you're new to us, uh, please feel free to ask questions, okay? This is a two-way conversation about the art of building a miniature, so please, please do uh, chip in. If you haven't uh, been involved before, we usually get together on Thursdays around 4.30, that's Eastern Standard Time, to uh, cover a topic about building a miniature. So thanks for joining us. Uh, so just getting a little bit of, uh, caught up here from last week. We've got a bunch of things going on. I've been pretty busy, uh, mainly on the day job side. Uh, I've been uh, out of work for a little while, so I've been uh, looking for um, some new work in the marketing field, and uh, I've been, well, busy, uh, busy answering emails. So that's actually been pretty exciting, but it's taken up a lot of my hobby time that I would usually, usually be use, using for well, for hobby stuff. Uh, another thing that's pretty exciting that's coming up is Hot Lead. So that is Ontario's premier uh, miniature war game convention. Uh, with the COVID uh, restrictions being relaxed, we uh, everything should be a go for that. That's March 18th, 19th, and 20th. Uh, I'll be there with uh, the full miniature landscape hobbies uh deal uh, probably on Saturday and Sunday. Now, I'm not going to make it to Friday, but if you're looking for me Saturday and Sunday, I'll be there. And uh, I'm taking the Etsy store with me. So last week, we covered a lot of terrain, uh, showed off a lot of terrain that I've been building to get ready. Here's one of the bunkers. The tutorial on these builds will be coming out on the channel uh, maybe Sunday, too. So we have we have that coming up. And also in the future is, uh, I'm, I just recently got a wet palette. It's about time, it's something I've been putting off for a while. So we'll be doing reviews and talking a little bit more about that. I'm just getting used to the learning curve with it right now. Uh, and uh, um, wrapped up some light infantry. So some Napoleonic light infantry. There they are, the hybrid kit. There's some metal uh, um, models here. Great, Hassan. Well, welcome to uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, it says Hassan Morocco. So are you in Morocco? As we'll see if you reply here, because I was in Morocco a couple of years ago. It was awesome, awesome, fun time. Uh, got a good look around Marrakesh, got lost in the souks a whole bunch, and uh, went on a desert tour. All right. Oh, okay, Hassan. Thank you. So I love Morocco. It's a wonderful country and amazing orange juice. Really, really good orange juice. Um, yeah, I had I had the most fun there. It was it was amazing. Went there with my whole family. Anyways, we're here to talk about um, miniatures. So. Um, where else were we at? Wrote a couple articles for um, Military Miniature Magazine, a new miniature uh, magazine out of the U.S. I suggest you guys Google it, check it out. It's really cool. I don't know when my articles are going to drop, but I put in a basic terrain building article on basing and an article on um, a flame, uh, flame, Flames of War scenario, which, you know, Flames of War is probably my main game. So that was that was a, a lot of fun. Uh, what else is going on? So that's most of the important stuff, but do honestly make sure if you're in the area, you check out Hot Lead. Uh, and uh, while you're here joining me, if you're active in the chat, please do notice down on the right, there is a square with a dollar sign in it. That's so you can uh, give super stickers or super chats. And uh, that allows you to make a small donation to the channel, which is something I appreciate. Uh, no pressure though. I'm just I'm I'm really really happy to have people joining in to learn about the hobby. But uh, if you want to make a small donation to support the channel, I do appreciate it. Obviously, I've got some upgrades to do to the studio space, and your donations will go towards that. 
Uh, so let's get down to business. So we're going to talk about essentials for tools for model building and uh, terrain building. So we're going to lump them both together in this case, but a couple ground rules. Um, previously, we talked about paint, so we're not going to cover that. If you didn't see our previous live streams, go back and see our other live streams. We had a pretty uh, in-depth conversation about paint last week. And uh, we talked a lot about, we'll, we'll revisit it, but we talked a lot about the actual materials for um, building terrain in, in, in live streams prior to that. And of course, it's all covered in the body of the regular uh, video. So if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please do go ahead and uh, check it out on my YouTube channel. Uh, we cover all this in a lot more detail than we do here during the live streams. So ground rules, airbrushes. We're not gonna talk about them tonight. Sorry. Now, what does that mean? I love my airbrush. It is like probably next to my family members. I consider it a family member. I love my airbrush so much. But airbrushing is a totally different uh, kettle of fish. You've got a lot, oh, my, uh, uh, my, my light's gone out over there. I think it's still okay. You've got your compressors. You've got your safety devices, your respirators. So there's a lot to airbrushes that really requires its own video. So we're gonna we're gonna cover that in the future, should you guys want. If you're interested in airbrushes, let me know in the comments. Okay, so we've we've uh, we're gonna leave that out in this case. All right, but the other stuff we're gonna handle um, is just the basic essentials, and then I'm gonna go from the really essential to the really obscure. Now, if you have any thoughts on any of the products we're covering or anything that you feel is really, really essential, please put them into the chats uh, so we can take so we can discuss. Uh, obviously, the tools for building a miniature is a is a, a massive uh, massive field, and um, you know we can't get into all the corners with every single thing. So let's jump in and talk about the essentials. So first things first. Your basics that you cannot get away with, at least in my opinion, your basics that you cannot get away with in uh, the hobby of building a miniature. Most essential thing, craft knife, okay? So there's one of my craft knives. This is going to be in your toolkit most of the time. I would use a craft knife in 100% of my builds. It uh, doesn't matter whether I'm assembling a model kit or building terrain. We'll always have a craft knife at hand. Now, not all craft knives are created equal. Um, what you want to, in my opinion, what you want to avoid are these. Okay, considering how much you use your craft knife, you're going to want something that's comfortable to hold. So there are some with rubberized barrels on them. There's some with larger handles on them. Get one that's comfortable for you. These uh, steel jobbies with the knurled ends, or even the ones with the flat ends, I find them very uncomfortable to hold. So make sure that you actually invest some time in, in finding a craft knife that, that suits you. And the other thing is, of course, box cutters. These are for cutting boxes, not for building a miniature. So I'd use these maybe to cut cardboard bases. That's it. They have no place with your models. The steel is kind of springy, it will shatter if you bend it, and um, it's just not going to hold the, the uh, it's just not going to hold the point you need to uh, um, carve with plastic or, or, or like the finer materials, especially um, resin. So as sharp a blade as possible when you're working on resin. Resin's got sort of a, um, um, a crystalline structure to it and um, you can shatter it if you're if you're using uh, if you're using a blade that's uh, that's too dull or, or not the right shape for working with make sure you get lots of blades for your knives I buy them in I should have brought it over it's over there somewhere I buy them in 100 packs of number 11 blades off of um, off of Amazon and uh, you should change your blades off often especially if you're working on terrain so I find that uh, if you're uh, working with plastic models a, a duller blades okay but if you're um, working a lot with foam and especially foam core change your blade all the time every every you know 10 or 20 cuts you really need to change that blade otherwise you'll start losing the uh, nice clean edges and you'll start tearing at your materials. So hobby blade, 
super important. Next, you'll always find in my model kit, traveling with me, all right, side cutters or sprue cutters, okay? So this is not specific to um, the hobby of building a miniature. Everybody, uh, these would come with uh, for, you know, lots of different uses. But uh, a good pair of sharp side cutters is going to be your main helper, especially if you work a lot with uh, plastic kits where you're cutting pieces off the sprue. Place the, the flat side against the side of the model you want to cut and cut it. And then that will take that will take the sprue off. This is bad. I'm breaking it off my fingers. But this will take the sprue off fl uh, flush okay, with the side of the plastic. And you go in with your uh, go in with your hobby knife and take the, take the uh, a piece of the sprue off to make it completely flat. So it's a pretty straightforward piece of kit, but definitely one that you want. Okay, so those are your main pieces of equipment that you are main tools that you would use with virtually every miniature job, um, miniature building job, whether you're assembling a kit or making terrain. Those are, are your main things. Sort of a little further down the list, but third tier. Okay, needle files. All right. You could probably get away with needle files if you had a lot of really sharp blades on your knife and you were really careful with it. And honestly, with needle files, um, I don't find myself filing a lot on uh, plastic kits. Uh, but if you have... Um, if you have pewter, uh, like metal, or resin kits, you're going to need a file. You're going to need a file to rough up the surfaces to apply glue, and you're going to... No, yeah, yeah, I guess maybe it's kind of hard to come across hobby tools in, in Morocco, Hassan. Um... Yeah, one thing you can do is if you're looking for files, you can just use regular um, machinist files like you'd get at a hardware store. So I imagine you can get that. Um, they're larger, but they'll still work. They'll still work fine. Um, as an example, so there you have it. So needle files very important. Okay, um, especially with metal or resin. Not so much with plastic. Now the files do have a place with terrain building. Uh, you can use uh, files to shape um, the foam and foam core or uh, pink styrofoam. Okay, so I do it all the time. If you watch some of my builds, you'll see me. Uh, you'll see me taking. Um, sort of a larger file to the surfaces of, of foam, especially if you want to round them off. All right, so files are important. What else is on the list? So moving down the list. So this one's a little more obscure, but if you work in plastic or metal, it's pretty important, okay? That's a pin vise, all right? So that's just a drill that works by hand. Okay, you can also use it as a awl, awl, A-W-L. Um, to, to make holes in something. So if you're working with cardboard, I find myself using these a lot to poke holes to insert grass clumps or tree, uh, tree scenic effects in. Uh, drilling out gun barrels on military miniatures is a big deal and also pinning. So if you're trying to join two parts that are coming apart, you can use um, a pin vise, drill a socket on either side, bridge the gap with a piece of wire or uh, my favorite's just a, a jumbo, a heavy, uh, gauge paper clip and super glue the two sides together. So I have a video on that. I won't get a lot into that. That is a very essential skill for model building though, pinning. So um, especially if you, again, especially if you work with resin or metal, you need to learn how to pin. So um, check out the video on that in my feed. But a pin vise is good. So I will usually have a pin vise uh, with me in any of my model kits. All right, so we're starting to move into glue territory. So I see uh, some new people out there in the stream watching. Thanks for joining us, guys. This is Miniature Landscape Hobbies. We're doing a uh, we're doing a session today, a live stream specifically on the important tools for building in miniature, and that includes model kits and terrain. So we're going to handle both. We've just pretty much got through the your uh, main essentials, your your sprue cutters, your side cutters, your hobby knives, and your pin vise, uh, and then needle files. So thanks for joining. 
I am uh, live streaming on an iPad, so I can't see your name as you come in and out of the uh, in and out of the stream. So feel free to drop a comment to me to let me know you're here. Additionally, in the bottom right, uh, in the chat box, there's a little square with a dollar symbol in it. That is for super stickers or super chats. If you would like to uh, support the channel, you can make a small donation there. Obviously, anything you're donating. Hi, Winters. How you doing? You're a, you're a regular on here, so I really appreciate you tuning in. So if you choose to make a donation through the Super Stickers or Super Chats, I do appreciate it. It's not strictly necessary, but if you do, uh, rest assured, it's going to uh, being used to upgrade the studio space. Try to make it a little nicer for you guys when you're tuning in. All right, so now we move to glue. So I've covered glues mainly in the context of um, mainly in the context of, of building terrain previously, but now we're going to talk about just glue in general. So if you're working with plastic, like any um, any modeler these days, okay, uh, there's a series of extra thin. So this is the Tamiya brand, but any kind uh, helps. Tamiya extra thin or any extra thin model glue, this stuff is magic. Right. I actually didn't know about this stuff until a couple of years ago because I took a break um, from model painting and, and this was something that only happened in um, circles that were doing fine scale modeling. And so I found out about this for my models later. And all it is, is if you haven't used it, um, get some. And if you have used it, then you know where I'm going with how magical this is. You put your two pieces of plastic together. So... I'm doing something I shouldn't do. I'm just snapping these off the sprue by hand, but assume these were these pieces were moved correctly. Okay, so these are keyed pieces of a turret. This is uh, from a Churchill from a Battlefront kit for uh, Flames of War, I think. Put yes, that's exactly what it is. So you put the these are keyed, so they fit together. See that shape there? Okay, that's keyed. So that means that I can't assemble the pieces backwards. All right. They're shaped specifically so they can only go the correct way. Okay, so I've put my pieces now together. I don't need to run my glue into the crack. I can actually just run it around the seam. Okay. And the excess evaporates and you're ready to go. So, done. All right, that's an awesome um, product. Okay, uh, thin body plastic cement. Uh, if you aren't using it now, get some. You can thank me later. It's great. Now, what isn't great, uh, it has its places, but what generally isn't great is testers orange cement. Okay, so this is everywhere. Um, used to be able to get, I don't know if you still can, used to be able to get it from Walmart or a lot of stores you walk in, you'll see this in the toy section. Not a toy, it's nasty chemicals, but uh, what this does is it's essentially the same as the thin plastic cement, but it comes out in a very heavy body gel way. And that makes it difficult because you have to apply it to the pieces rather than run it into the seams. It's not as convenient. Uh, it does like other plastic cements, melts the, uh, melts the pieces together to pretty much weld the plastic, uh, which makes it a very strong bond. So when you see me use this, usually what I'll be doing is using it on tank tracks, or um, one piece tank tracks, or uh, larger parts that need to go to the body of the model and be held together. But this will uh, mar the surface of a model. So I'll usually only use it on the inside of a piece. So when you want a really strong bond, you can use this, but use it on the inside, not on the outside, uh, outside the sort of the viewer facing portions of the model. So orange uh, testers, um, blue isn't generally in my uh, immediate traveling case for, for my essential tools. But what is, is cyanoacrylic glue, super glue, right? So this is the Gorilla brand. You can use any brand. Um, I do suggest that you go for the heavier body, more of the gel body stuff. It's just a little bit easier to work with. You can get it very thick. You don't want it like super thick. But um, super glue in its um, in its liquid version has a very low surface tension and it runs all over. And that could be a real issue. Get it on your fingers, get it on the outside of the model. And super glue will mar the outside of the model uh, if you're using it. Um, 
and uh, uh, it'll also accumulate in the enclosed spaces. It creates a vapor that will that will change things. So uh, um, you'll see people building um, generally like model cars. I built a Valkyrie for Warhammer 40,000 once and they have plastic inserts for the canopies. And I was so happy to finish it off. Last thing I did was glue the uh, plastic, uh, the clear plastic into the canopy and put the canopy down and the super glue vapor accumulated in there and frosted over the windows. And you couldn't see any of the work I had done on the pilots and all the interior. So um, don't do that, <laughs> okay? So if you're going to apply super glue to something that um, is clear, then make sure it has full time to dry and those vapors dissipate. Now, if you know about super glue, the worst thing about super glue is um, waiting for it to dry. So it doesn't dry super quick, but it dries well. Now, from a modeler's point of view, you'd like your super glue to be very precise and you don't want to necessarily slow down your project. So this is another essential, okay, as essential as super glue itself. I don't use super glue without it anymore. And that's um, super glue uh, bonding accelerant. This will allow you to bond any um, pieces together, like if you're using resin or metal, uh, where you absolutely have to have super glue. Uh, accelerant will uh, set the glue within 10 seconds, 15 seconds, maybe 30 seconds if you've applied it really, really heavily. Uh, and it helps you apply it on. It's just a light spritz over top. It evaporates itself, but it sets the super glue. I went 20 some years as a model builder with never using accelerant, not thinking it was important. Now, um, accelerant is always at my fingertips. Um, if you haven't used it, go and get a bottle. It's not terribly cheap, but it's not expensive either. Uh, I think it's like that bottle is like nine dollars uh, Canadian, but that would save you far more than nine dollars worth of time to enjoy your hobby when you use it. Okay, so those are the top tier items. Okay, super glue, the light bodies, plastic cement, the pin vise the needle files, your side cutters, screw cutters, and your hobby blade, okay, your craft blade. That is going to handle 90% of your builds, all right? You can safely enjoy your life as a model builder with just those tools, and you're pretty much just those tools in your toolkit, okay? Now we're going to move on. All right, so from here, we're gonna start talking, we're gonna broaden things out. We're gonna start adding uh, tools that are pretty specific to terrain to it. Now, all that stuff just covered is good for model building, plastic, metal, and uh, uh, plastic, metal, and pewter kits, um, resin kits, 3D printed products. However, those, Hassan, Yes, uh, I do have a Facebook group by all means. You can look it up. It's called Miniature Landscape Hobbies. So uh, the Facebook and the YouTube channel. Uh, so if you just enter that in your search bar, by all means, Hassan, you're, you're allowed to participate in the, uh, uh, in the Facebook group. We'd love to have you there. Um, so that just gives you sort of a, a high level look at the essentials. Now we're going to move, so we're going to move on to some of the more obscure stuff for terrain. Now I've just see here, there's quite a few new people have joined. Thanks for joining. I am on an iPad, so I can't see your name as you jump in and out. I can see that you are coming in. So by all means, if you have any questions or would like to introduce yourself, put your name, uh, go ahead and, uh, put some chats in. I would uh, love to love to hear from you. If you have any uh, suggestions or products that you can't live without, please let me know. Um, additionally, while you're in there, there's a little square on the bottom right. It for um, with a dollar symbol in it. That's for super chats or super stickers. That allows you to make a small donation to the channel. If you would like to donate, uh, by all means, please do. I really, really appreciate the support. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is supported entirely by its viewers. On the other hand, if that's not your thing, don't worry. I'm just really glad to have you here. If this is your first time, Miniature Landscape Hobbies does have a Facebook group. You can look it up. And most importantly, we have a very active YouTube channel. 
Uh, so if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. All right, so moving on. So this is where to start. Um, your essentials more for terrain than for working um, on models, but, the, but they come in handy almost just as much. This is a glue gun, all right? So, or, or a hot, hot glue applicator because it's not a PC to say gun. So this is your hot glue applicator, all right? Pretty well everybody has seen one of these. This is um, probably the most essential terrain building tool because of course it dries uh, strong and it dries quickly. Uh, one thing about hot glue is um, like a heavy body plastic cement, you want to use it internally on your models. You do not want to use it externally because uh, one, paint doesn't take very well to the glue itself. And two, it has a really weird organic look to it. So um, when it dries, you get these weird blobs, right? Uh, just make sure that those blobs either are somewhere where it makes sense, covered up by grit or out of sight. And of course, it creates strands, which brings me to my next uh, piece of uh, important tool for terrain, which is tweezers. You can get these in all shapes, sizes, different types. So metal tweezers, um, again, useful for removing the strands of hot glue. And uh, um, my most common use for them is probably placing uh, scenic effects like grass clumps and tufts. All right, so very important. You can use that dip your your um, component you're working with in glue so you don't get the glue on your fingers and then use that for application. So they, um, metal tweezers, rank pretty highly up there. Another thing that's very useful, especially for terrain builders, okay, a steel ruler. So combine that with your craft knife. Uh, if you use a plastic ruler and a fresh blade, you're going to take a chunk out of the side of your ruler and you're not going to get a straight line ever again. So use a steel ruler, all right? Steel rulers do cost a bit more, but of course they last forever. So all you'll ever need is one. So go grab yourself a steel ruler, very important. Okay. Starting to get a little more obscure, but if you're cutting, cutting mats also useful. Not super necessary, but also useful. If you don't have a dedicated workspace, you probably don't want to be putting um, cuts and grooves into the surface of your table. Um, if you're living at home with, you know, or your parents are around, you want to make sure that you don't ruin the, uh, you don't ruin the furniture. So um, go out and get yourself a craft knife or ask your mom or dad if you're younger to get, or sorry, get a cutting mat, I should say. Um, ask your mom and dad to get you a cutting mat. They'll be impressed because it'll preserve, uh, it'll preserve the work surfaces in the house. A square. Well, this is a plastic or Bakelite square. Uh, I really wish I had a metal one. Um, just like the metal ruler, because you can take a chunk out of this. But if you're working on terrain, especially buildings, you want to ensure that your parts are coming together at a right angle. The square is the way to do it. All right, so the the side that I didn't bring a piece to show you, but this side has a T-shape on, on one end that would go over the material you're cutting, and then that would create a squared off edge to make sure you're cutting correctly. And there are um, measurements on here. Now, mine is imperial. Um, it's a little bit of a pain. I don't think there's metric on here. No, so it's a, a little bit of a pain. I'm Canadian. So uh, in Canada, we work in both Imperial and metric. We're kind of confused that way. We don't choose one or the other, we use both. So uh, when I start a project, I will usually decide ahead of time whether I'm working in um, metric for centimeters or Imperial for inches. And I'll stick with that measurement through the whole project. If I'm using the square, I'll usually choose uh, Imperial. All right, so. Oh, you're welcome, Hassan. Okay, so here, hmm, my lights kind of giving me trouble today. Here is a product I've talked about a lot, specifically on the section on basing, Mod Podge. All right, so when it comes to adhesives now and for terrain building, Mod Podge is where it's at. And I won't get a lot into it because I've discussed it. You can go back and look at one of my episodes on basing. Uh, Mod Podge combines very well with rubbing alcohol to break the surface tension, which allows you to, 
don't know why my lights are giving me issues. Here. Hold on. I don't know if that improves it or not. Um, okay, so rubbing alcohol, let's see if I can get it there. All right, rubbing alcohol doesn't matter. The percentage is Mod Podge's best friend. It helps it evaporate, helps it dry faster, and you can mix the two together to break surface tension. You can also cut Mod Podge with water. So if you haven't worked with it, definitely check it out. Uh, go over to one of my basing videos in the YouTube stream or one of my terrain building, uh, building videos, like one of the ones on hills, uh, where I work a lot with that combination. Um, that is superior in all ways to white glue, okay, or regular craft glue. If you have been using craft glue in your builds until now and not been using Mod Podge, go get Mod Podge, okay? Take this and use this for secondary stuff or like I've done, let it dry out and don't use it anymore. Resin parts. Yes, that's true, Scott. You're right. So um, you can also seal with Mod Podge. Thanks, uh, Scott. You reminded me. I wanted to, to talk about that. So here is a piece of, here's a foam wall. It's a fairly uh, basic build. Okay. See that? Um, Uncured did not know that. I was thinking of like once you painted something for terrain that you could go over it. Um, have you talked to me uh, on Facebook about that later? I'd like to know more about how you would incorporate Mod Podge with un uncured resin for like 3D printing, I'm assuming. Um, so you paint a layer of Mod Podge over top of this and you can tint it and it adds a lot of strength to it, all right? And it seals it, so it's very important. Um, to uh, uh, let your um, terrain survive wear and tear. So I'm, even though I build a lot of dioramas, I am primarily a, a, a war gamer. So I'll seal everything with Mod Podge after the, uh, during the process as it goes to make sure that it lasts better. Here's an example of a hill. So this is uh, made of styrofoam and cardboard, but it's all sealed down with Mod Podge to make it, uh, to make it much more durable so it will, will survive the wear and tear of gaming. All right, so just uh, one final dig on uh, Mod Podge, or um, good thing about Mod Podge, something that I really, really um, talk about a lot as an essential is a soy sauce bottle, <laughs> okay, an old dropper bottle. There we go. Loaded with about 90% uh, water, about 10% Yeah, I'm 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 kind of quite inter I'm very interested in hearing more about that. Um so the um uh, this is an old soy sauce bottle uh about uh, nine parts uh, water to about one part mod podge and then mixed with um black paint and a little bit of rubbing alcohol to break surface tension. And this is the terrain builder's um secret weapon. All right? You can see it in some of my videos. I don't always use it, but when I'm, I tend to be making um, terrain in large quantities, what I'll do is I'll lay it down after I've put the grit down, glued it down with Mod Podge, soak it with some, some rubbing alcohol to break surface tension, and then I'll just go over top of it and lay this on over top of it. Um, and uh, it'll basically prime the model and seal the model, uh, seal the grit down, seal the surface of the model so it'll handle wear and tear and prime it because it's got black paint loaded in it, all at the same time. So that's a, a handy trick and something that's usually um, fairly close at hand with my tools. So those are your second tier tools um, for model building and the most common stuff that you would also add to working in your uh, working on your terrain. All right, so again, our front tier stuff, first level stuff, okay, your clippers, your craft knife, Pin vise, needle files, super glue in combination with um, uh, um, super glue accelerant, cure setter, okay? Uh, fine body plastic cement. Those are your main model building tools. And as you branch out in terrain, hot glue gun, tweezers, if I can get them back from my pile here, tweezers, tweezers, pretty good idea. 
plastic ruler, cutting mat, maybe a square if you want it, adhesives, Mod Podge, all the time. Best stuff out there, okay? A little bit uh, of rubbing alcohol helps uh, activate and flow the Mod Podge and helps it evaporate. And then the soy sauce bottle with Mod Podge water and black paint in it. Okay, so now we're getting into the stuff that's a little more obscure and probably specific to uh, terrain building, all right? And you'll see this a lot. Um, I am not a big fan of uh, plaster or filler for terrain building because um, it's messy, takes a long time to dry. Uh, and uh, I always found it easier to work with with uh, masking tape. So if you watch a lot of my tutorials on building terrain, I will build up areas of hills or um, spaces around, around raised areas with masking tape because you just stick it down and once you layer over it with your glue or Mod Podge, it's as permanent as could be. Okay, So you'll see that my terrain here at the bottom is usually um, sealed uh, around with masking tape. Okay, not with um, plaster or wood filler, um, spackle, sometimes we call it, uh, joint compounds, goes by a lot of different names, it's all more or less the same stuff. Uh, however, it does have its place in my opinion. Sometimes um, you're working on something where you just can't get away without having plaster and it's great for texture. So um, if you add texture, if you add plaster to paint, hopefully this comes through. Okay. If you add plaster to your paint in a fairly, um, you know, maybe like one third plaster, two thirds paint, then what you can do is you can just brush the texture right on the model as you let it dry. So this is um, a bunker I'm building for um, hot lead. So this will be in my, this will probably actually be in my hot lead store. I've built some of these for the table too, but but this one, I think it's for the store. And you'll see that it lends a really interesting concrete-like texture. And that is just a very, very thin coat of, um, of plaster mixed into uh, the paint and then brushed straight onto the surface. Uh, as another example, so this ch model church I built, I didn't want to... Um, carve the brickwork into the brickwork or regular um, stonework into the into the foam core. I was just sick of doing it. <laughs> so I decided I would texture the outside so it looked like maybe it was stuck out or, or uh, had parge applied over top of it, parging applied over top of it. So that's the same thing, just with a little more heavy coat of plaster into it. So uh, plaster or um, uh, or joint compound is useful, but only if you're specifically looking for um, textured uh, concrete or stone effects, all right? At least in my opinion. I know some model builders swear by it, and there are other products that mix um, different paper fibers and stuff to it. I have not used it myself, but uh, um, I will at some point in time uh, uh, try that stuff, and I'll, I'll get back to you on it. But generally, um, not a top-tier product, but still useful to have around. All right, so I do see some people uh, coming in here. Uh, thanks for joining, I really, really appreciate it. I'm Joe from Miniature Landscape Hobbies. We're just doing a live stream on um, essential products for building models and terrain, We're looking specifically at tools today. All right, I uh, am on an iPad, so I can't see your name as you pop in and out, but um, go ahead and drop a line to me in the chat if you would like to get in touch, uh, or if you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, while you're in there, there is a, a square on the bottom right with a dollar symbol in it. That's for super chats or super stickers. If you press that, you can make a little donation to the channel. Only do so if you want. I do appreciate the support. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is supported only by its viewers. So uh, um, I, do, uh, I do appreciate it, but it's not essential. I'm just glad to have you here. Uh, plaster contracts, it weighs, and later the cracks and chips. Uh, yeah, so that's true. Plaster will crack and chip, um, especially if you just apply it on its own without something in it. Uh, one of the common ways to build uh, terrain in the old days was to apply a layer of uh, plaster over your board and then texture down over top of that. 
these days, um, at least I just you go uh, use plaster a lot, Bill. Yeah. Um, well, you could maybe tell us a little bit about it and some of some of yours. I always found so I've kind of moved away from plaster. I do have um, a neat video where I uh, made some walls, like I did a Berlin wall build. It's, it's quite a ways back in the channel now, but where I actually used uh, plaster in a mold and set it. Um, I do see a lot of people using plaster to make uh, rocks in the in the woodland scenics uh, rock molds. I've always uh, um, just made my own rocks by carving uh, um, pink styrofoam. But please, by all means, Bill, all means, Bill, um, you can you can persuade me to the to the side of plaster as as a good building tool. But uh, um, I uh, yeah, it's just, it's just not something I use a lot anymore. So now we're getting uh, fairly far away into the more obscure stuff, all right? This would be the stuff that would be most specialized for terrain builders, but uh, useful if you're building terrain in large quantity. Uh, and uh, um, we're talking about um, foam cutters. So there's a piece of foam. Oh yeah, terrain tutor. Well, uh, Mel does some awesome work. Yes, he does use a lot of plaster. Uh, one thing he does is that I've seen is he uses plaster to seal um, styrofoam so he can uh, so he can uh, spray paint over it, which is a really good idea. Um, so yes, yeah, so talking about foam cutters. So there's three types of foam foam cutters. There's um, a table cutter, uh, a hot knife and a, hot, a wire hot foam cutter. The table cutter is also a wire cutter as well, but different type. So my wire cutter is over here. I'm just gonna, I don't even know if we can get it in the camera. I don't know if you guys can see it. There it is, okay. There's my hot wire table cutter, all right. It's got this weird attachment on it, this spike on a, on a little platform, that's for cutting circles. So if you watch the second episode, if you watch the second episode of the North African um, terrain build in preparation for the new uh, Flames of War release, um, I use that to cut um, little pieces to form a well on the circle. Um, neat. I had to learn what it was the hard way. I have really no idea what it is. I'm still getting used to using it. But the table itself is your best option for making nice, straight, uh, clean foam cuts. And uh, um, there's a lot of models out there. There's the Proxon, which is a super name brand. I don't have it. I have um, one of the more economy ones and it works just fine. Quite enjoy using it. Uh, that's for cutting large things. So if you're cutting a sheet of styrofoam, you need a table cutter. If you're cutting smaller chunks or you gotta get into a weird shape, then you can use this. This is a Woodland Scenic hot wire cutter. So usually a piece of wire would go through here. Uh, press the button, heats up, and then we'll cut through the foam. Um, a lot of people have these. Uh, I've had this for a long time. I actually don't use it very often. In fact, it's not set up to be used right now. I don't use it very often. Um, I find the table does the same job uh, a little more accurately. And then the last um, piece of technology is the hot foam knife. So it's the same principle. This wire heats up and you can carve into it. And you see me using that in the um, latest hill video. And strangely enough, I use it to melt through plastic to make a template for making grass pumps in my last grass pump video. This is one of those things that has a thousand and one uses probably more than what it's just intended for. But it heats up and you can carve into and cut through foam with it. Um, you can get it fairly accurate, and I and um, I just got this actually for Christmas, so I'm still I'm still getting the um, the hang of it. Definitely a lower tier piece of equipment, not super essential, but um, has its uses, especially if you like building. Um, well, hills are the are the main application for it because if you build build fat the way I do with old fashioned layered foam, uh, you'll need that. So we're coming to the very bottom now of the list, but um, sort of a last but not least sort of situation. Okay, static grass applicator. All right, so if you do uh, terrain or a basing models and you use good old fashioned static grass, 
All right, static grass, like there's a Woodland Scenics brand, but we use any type. All right, um, static grass applicator. I don't know, maybe you guys haven't used, um, some of you maybe haven't used it, but what you do is you press a button, all right, and it, um, button on the side here, and it charges this, this grate here and creates uh, a stat, static electricity with the, creates a static electricity with the surface of whatever you're working on, and then you shake it down over top. So that's how we get this nice standing static grass. Okay, you shake out the grass, and you use the static electricity to stand the grass up straight into a layer of Mod Podge or glue on the surface of the terrain. This uh, helps ground it, so you have to touch that to the surface of whatever you're working on. So I would need four hands to demonstrate it. But say I was putting, um, say I was putting uh, static grass on the top of this. Okay. Sometimes I'll put a pin in the jaws of this alligator clip. I touch this down to the surface, spread Mod Podge where I want to put my static grass and patches, and then you just shake it down over top. All right. That will cause your static gra your, your grass to stand up straight. And it's better than old fashioned uh, um, sawdust flock. So there's old fashioned sawdust flock. Anybody that's an old dude like me will remember using that, just gluing it down. It doesn't stand up. It doesn't really make convincing grass, all right? One thing about these is that it uses um, batteries to, to work. So there is a current running through this and I have shocked myself with it before. Don't do that. All right, so after you run it for a while, it builds up a charge on this grate. You take your grounder and you hit it. It makes a neat pop and a blue flash, and uh, now it's grounded. So those are the main tools that I use uh, in virtually every terrain or plastic model build. And those, those are what I would have in my toolkit uh, most often for, for uh, really any any um, any project building in miniature. Um, there are of course other things, um, but uh, those would be what what I would take with me or have you know in immediate arms reach on uh, any one day while I'm uh, while I'm building. Um, now, as I said at the start, we did not cover airbrushes. Uh, we looked at paint in general last week, so I didn't really get into that. We looked at um, grit and other materials for basing in, in the previous weeks. But they're all, you know, all important to come together. And we will cover, um, we will cover airbrushing soon, provided you guys want that. Um, I do find airbrushes are, are pretty important. It's another thing I do use on, on a daily basis, but it is a completely different topic of conversation. It's got um, other safety and, and uh, use considerations. So those are the main tools. If you uh, don't have some of those now, at least from the top tier stuff, you should probably uh, try to get your hands on it. Uh, so, you know, like your craft knives, your slide cutters, pin vices, things like that are super essential. Moving down the list, it's only relevant depending on the type of build you want. And uh, as you get further down my list, down to, um, Stuff like the uh, the adhesives are important, but if you get right down to the bottom, the static grass applicator is only necessary if you're looking for that really, really refined um, diorama style look on uh, your models. If, uh, if you aren't, then um, you can just work straight with uh, grit and glue. And um, if you don't have access to a static grass applicator, you can of course just uh, um, sprinkle the static grass by hand. It doesn't give you the nice um, raised up uh, look that you get, like proper grassy look, but it still looks fine. I, I, I went that way for, for many, many years. That being said, static grass applicators aren't that expensive. You can get one for 30 or 40 bucks on Amazon. You can get the name brand stuff like the Woodland Scenics uh, Grass King. Uh, those tend to be upwards of $100 or more, if I remember correctly. Uh, I've not used a name brand static grass applicator. I'll have to sometime because they're probably, they're probably excellent, even better, but uh, um, you can get away with, uh, with an economy one for now. So there's a, a top to bottom look. We've been going for about 15 minutes. Uh, if anybody out there has any specific questions on any of these products, hit, 
uh, let me know now. Uh, we can uh, we can do a little Q&A if you want. Uh, otherwise, we're going to wrap it up for the day. So any questions out there? And again, thank you for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. If um, you haven't uh, uh, been engaged with the channel before, like we were talking to Hassan here in the chat, uh, please, by all means, check out Miniature Landscape Hobbies on YouTube. Uh, I think most people that are on here have come to uh, uh, come to the the uh, uh, live stream through YouTube. I know uh, Winters had, Scott had, um, Bill Ronan had. Thanks for joining me again, by the way, guys. Um, but if you haven't, make sure you go over and check it out. Uh, you can check out my Patreon. So I do have a Patreon. Oh, yeah, I better talk about that. I do have a Patreon. I got three um, patrons right now. Thank you very much, uh, Ginger in Japan, um, Mike from Canadian War Gamers, and Jacob from Lack of Foresight uh, Gaming are all current uh, are all current patrons. And guys, I really, really appreciate it. It's been excellent. When you do sign up at the base levels, you get access to my 3D print files, uh, daily updates. I'm working on getting you guys set up for early access to my videos before they come out and uh, some other new perks. At the higher levels, um, you can get personalized painting lessons or terrain building lessons. And at the very highest level, you can get custom terrain work as a thank you for your support. All right, so that's, uh, that's it. We've been going for 50 minutes. Uh, I think everybody's got the information they need out there. I don't see any questions coming out. So I do really appreciate you joining me. Uh, I should be back next Thursday for another um, should be back Thursday for another live stream. I don't foresee anything getting in the way of that. So keep your eye out on the Facebook and the various uh, f um, Facebook uh, groups that uh, that you see for the crew uh, you know that we frequent for building a miniature. so check it out. Uh, I'll put links up of course. I usually put the links up for the live feeds on. Uh, see you, Winters. See ya. Make sure uh, you're always very active in the group, so don't be a stranger. Really appreciate your support. Uh, so you'll see you'll see that in the Facebook groups. I usually put a warning up on uh, Wednesday afternoon that the that there's a new live stream coming. And this week, keep an eye out. I'm pretty sure Sundays, I'll get a regular video up Sunday. Usually I try to put my videos up Sunday morning. There should be one coming out on um, the bunker build, provided I can get it ready in time. And I have a bonus episode out there floating in the wings I mean to get out, which is uh, video content of my interview with Canadian Wargamers, which was really a lot of fun. You can find out a little bit about my background and a little bit about the gaming scene in Canada if, if you're not familiar with it. Uh, if you're in the region around Stratford on the 18th, 19th, or 20th, we started out talking about it at the outset. That uh, That's the weekend of Hot Lead, which is Canada's premier wargaming convention. And it's going on this year. It's not cancelled, so, so I hope I haven't jinxed it. Uh, really, really looking forward to it. Miniature Landscape Hobbies will be there. Uh, I'll have my store. Uh, if you want to get some custom terrain, I'll have lots of my builds available for sale if you want to support the channel. And I'm also running a table which at which we'll be doing a really cool World War II uh, custom Flames of War scenario. Um, there are two time slots open. The first one goes to 9.30 uh, to 1, I think. And then the second slot goes from... I want to say two to six in the afternoon. The first time slot is filled. So I've got as many um, gamers as I can fit at my table. So if you want to join, you go over to the Hot Lead website and uh, find the time slot and make sure you sign up if you want to play on my table because it will be, it'll probably fill in, in a couple days at most. Uh, so uh, have a good week, everybody. We'll see you back here next week for another live stream, if you so choose. And, uh, of course, stay tuned for those videos that are coming up. Make sure you subscribe. Check out my Etsy store through the links if you want to see some of the terrain I have for sale. There will be a lot more coming out uh, after um, Hot Lead. It'll go straight into the Etsy store, so you've got a bigger choice. 
and um, please do check out my Patreon if you would like if you like the support. I would really really appreciate uh, if you would contribute. Uh, Miniature Landscape Hobbies is supported entirely by its viewers, and uh, honestly, I'm really really enjoying uh, doing it and uh, um, I'd like to continue to do it. So please contribute through Patreon if, if you can. Um, uh, it's just something I, uh, I really appreciate. Mind you, if you can't, don't worry. Just make sure you subscribe and follow along. So thanks for coming out this week. We'll be back next week. And until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.